Hi everybody, here we are again, and this is a Brewmaker Bitter. Brewmaker Essential Beer Kits. Very nice. So, that's the label off the can. I managed to take it off, soaking it in hot water. I've read some bump and it, it, this is the bargain basement range, shall we call it. £10.50 for 40 pints. You need to add a kilo of sugar of your choice. This has been brewed with standard table sugar. That's what I'm doing all of the kits. Just to give it a baseline flavour. Uh, right, where are we? So, it has a starting gravity of SG1044 at 17 degrees centigrade. Standard table sugar of a kilo. Um, a final gravity of 1014 at 20 degrees C. Which actually comes in at 4% by my calculations. The kit said 3.8%. £10.50, so it's cheap as chips. Let's have a quick look what it says on the label. Uh, malt extract, yeast, hop extract, yeast in sachet. No, sorry. Malt extract. Isometry something or other, I think. Hop extract. Dried yeast in sachet. Uh, barley. Allergen C ingredients in bowls, bowls, which is barley, which does have or can have gluten in it. If you're gluten intolerant. Brewmaker essential beer kits contain specially manufactured malt extracts from the finest malted barley. They are a classic range of six beer kits requiring sugar and water to produce 40 pints. Full instructions under the cap, chuck them in the bin, uh, store in a cool, dry place. Best before date, see, best of can. That's about it. If you go on your chosen buying site, I go, I don't go, I buy from the hop shop in Plymouth, uh, because when Leonard Homebrew, my local brewing shop, they were retiring and shutting down at the beginning, well, no, mid-pandemic, shall we say, they decided, <clears throat> as they had to shut, they suddenly realised that they didn't need to stay open. So, they closed. They had a few openings where you could go and fill your boots. And they had a final sale on. I bought quite a bit of stuff on offer. Um, saved me quite a bit of money. They were just getting rid of stock. Yeah, so... When they shut down, the hop shop were the only places I could get refills for my gas cylinder. So, as they helped me out, I stuck with them. There's other places to go, they're all about the same price. But yeah, so £10.50 from the hop shop. Let's have a sniff. Sandalwood. It's on the Yeah, it smells like beer and sandalwood. There is a, I think, a slightly fruity blackberry, I don't know, apple, that sort of fruity. Can't put your finger on it. That sort of, not a citrusy, nice fruity. Nice fruity smell. 
and nice fruity taste. Again, I'd say, mm, let's see. There's um, a bitterness that almost, but it's not. I was going to say, it's almost like an apple fruitiness, but it's not quite. It's, it could be sort of a blackberry fruitiness. It does say it comes from the hops. And there is that. It's very, right. Shall we just do the taste test? Let's try and concentrate on the hoppy bits first, which is the, what I'm going for really, with the fruity bit and rambling. Yeah, there's this. A nice, gentle bittering with it's almost a tartness to it along with this fruitiness so it's almost like um, not quite no it's not apples it's more like blackberry it's like that fruity beer flavour Let's put it down to that fruity beer flavour. Is there the bitterness does last as well? It's quite. It's not a harsh bitterness. It's just a nice, gentle bitterness. Yeah, it's um, it's not apple. It's more like blackberry, I'd say. So it might be a rambling cross. That's a. That produces a, a fruity flavour. And then there's, yeah, and the bittering lasts. It lasts, outlasts the malt. There's not, it's not heavy on the malt flavour. It won't be, it's like a golden beer, isn't it? Um, a light golden colour, let's. There's some flashy torches, there's some there is some carbonation in it. You can see that coming up from the bottom. Gently carbonated. And yeah, a light blinded myself. A light golden flavour. Golden flavour, golden colour. As I say, it's not heavily malty and there is a slight wateriness to it. For a single can kit, that's not bad. Light on the mouthfeel. Definitely light on the mouthfeel. But I've had others where there's a... Like a gap in the taste. Where you get this sort of wateriness it doesn't really have that it has the the hoppiness up front and then the mild maltiness and then it's sort of gone and you've got this back end bitterness that is a very nice beer never going to win any awards because it's too light in flavour, I'd say, for an award winning beer, unless it was a lager. But it's not, it's supposed to be bitter. Um, so it's a light bitter. It's better than some light bitters of Alan Pubs, Boddington's. Some people like Boddington's. I'm not a big fan. Big fan. Are they still going? Don't know. I've not been. We have been away to Estdale and I'd prefer to drink that than 
at least two of the beers I had while out in the pub amongst lots of other cans that we had. Um, yeah, we had a, a plan B that was citrusy. It was okay. Handsome Hound. Don't know who did that one. Not good. Very citrusy, very stalky, I'll call it. That hoppiness where you've you've basically over hopped it and you've got that greenness to it. Not quite a pine flavour, it's more like chewing on twigs. Better. Yeah, I'd probably, probably prefer that. Now, I did also have a Dunbar. Dunbar? Doombar. Dunbar? Hey, Dunbar. A Doombar. Um, yeah, that doesn't... That doesn't hold up to a Doombar. Doombar was... Yeah. Heavy on the mouthfeel and... Lots of maltiness. Same sort of... Probably the same sort of bittering profile, but yeah, so better than some, not as good as the others. Right, I think I've waffled enough. Would I buy it again? Yeah, I might add something extras to it next time, you know, something like a dodgy white powder. Maltodextrin, PGA powder, something like that. Maltodextrin will give it a, a bit more body to it. Maltodextrose, multi, whatever. The dodgy white powder that I did, is it maltodextrin? I don't know. I'll put it down there. Right, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.